Last night a friend called me asking for help installing the wave speed node. We spent about an hour figuring things out and something clicked. This wasn't the first time he'd called me with the same problem. The first time it was a Triton issue with the trellis node on the portable installation of Comfy. The problems were exactly the same. That's why today I'm gonna walk you through how to install and use both the wave speed nodes and the T-Cache node. By the end of this, you'll have everything set up and running smoothly. Before we start, please like and subscribe to Sneaky Robot. It really helps out a lot. Let's talk about what wave speed and T-Cache are and why they're worth adding to your setup. Both wave speed and T-Cache are custom nodes designed to speed up your image and video generation process. The idea behind them is caching. Caching allows the model to save certain calculations it needs so that it doesn't have to redo them every single time. This saves a lot of time and makes everything run more efficiently. Wave Speed offers a couple of nodes you'll be using. The first one is called Apply First Block Cache. This node remembers the calculations from the first part of the generation process. Since this part doesn't change much between generations, caching it speeds things up significantly. Another important node in wave speed is compile model. It uses a method called torch.compile. Think of it like fine-tuning the engine of a car. It optimizes the AI model's code to make it run faster. There are a few things you need to keep in mind about the compile model node. It doesn't work well on Windows unless Triton is installed, which I'll show you how to set up later. It also doesn't always work perfectly with model offloading, a feature that moves parts of the model to the CPU to save memory. If you run into issues, you'll need to disable model offloading by adding dash dash GPU only when you launch Comfy UI. It's also important to note that compile model won't work with older GPUs like the GTX 1080. It needs a device with a CUDA capability of 7.0 or higher. Essentially, anything below the 20 series cards won't be compatible. But don't worry if your hardware doesn't meet this requirement. Wave Speed's Apply First Block Cache node works great on its own. Tcache works similarly to Wave Speed, but its focus is on caching information from the time step embedding. This part of the AI model tracks where it is in the generation process. By caching this information, Tcache speeds things up in a big way. Both nodes, Wave Speed and Tcache, come with adjustable settings. These let you control how much caching is done. More caching generally means faster speeds, though in some cases it might slightly reduce the quality of your results. Let's get back to the workflow. I'm using a basic flux text-to-image workflow that's divided into three groups. The first group is the loader group. This group includes the quantized model loader, the dual clip loader for the clip L and T5 models, and the VA loader for the flux VAE. The second group is the speed boost group. This is where the new nodes come into play. It includes the apply first block cache and compile model plus nodes, which are part of the wave speed nodes. This group also includes the tcache node. The third group is the normal text to image group, which ties everything together. These nodes are straightforward to use. You just need to connect them to the checkpoint and the K sampler. This can also be done using LTXV and Hunyuan. Wave speed nodes add an extra layer of flexibility by being compatible with SDXL. For this workflow, you can port any of these nodes to the model sampling flux node, depending on your hardware and the node you want to test. If you don't have a 20 series or higher graphics card, you'll want to port from the apply first block cache. If you do have a 20 series or higher card, you can port from the compile model plus node. And if you're using tcache, you can port directly from the tcache node. Let's test the wave speed node first. I'll port it to the model sampling flux node, since I'm working with a GTX 1070 Ti, I don't meet the requirements to use the Compile Model Plus node, so we'll focus on Apply First Block Cache. For testing, I'll use the same prompt for all nodes. A close-up portrait of a whimsical yellow and red, rusty robot sitting in a Budapose atop a hovering flying carpet. The camera angle is slightly low and tilted upward, emphasizing the robot's serene expression and the intricate details of its rusted exterior. The flying carpet is finely embroidered with intricate paisley designs and glowing blue runes, subtly hovering over a serene lake at sunrise. Soft, ethereal morning light filters through the mist, creating gentle reflections of the robot and the carpet on the water's surface. The background is composed of distant misty mountains and faint silhouettes of birds in flight. The image has a shallow depth of field f1.4, 
with the robot and carpet in sharp focus, while the background is beautifully blurred. The mood is peaceful and mystical, with a soft pastel color palette dominated by yellows, reds, and blues. To test performance, I'll start with a low residual drift threshold and gradually increase it. I'll begin at 0.02 and go up to 0.25, generating an image at each step. Since I'm working with an 8GB GPU, my generation times will be in minutes rather than seconds. Here's what the results show. As you increase the residual drift threshold, the speed of generation improves significantly. However, there's a trade-off. The quality of the image decreases as the threshold gets higher. Finding a balance between quality and speed is key. For me, the sweet spot with wave speed at 25 steps is a residual drift threshold of 0.15. It gives a noticeable boost to speed without compromising the quality too much. Next, I'll port the TCache node and run the same kind of test. But this time I'll start with a residual drift threshold of 0.1 and gradually increase it to 0.4. I'll also adjust the node steps to 25. After running the tests, here's what the results look like. Again, it's important to find a balance between speed and quality. You only need to do this once for each setup, whether you're using LTXV Hunyuan or something else. Once you've identified the right threshold and settings for your system, you're good to go. The speed to quality ratio with TCache doesn't quite match what you get with wave speed. For example, with wave speed, I can cut inference time in half while still maintaining acceptable image quality. TCache doesn't deliver the same level of performance in this area. One thing to note is that both wave speed and TCache nodes support LoRa's, but TCache has a bit more compatibility since it works with both LoRa's and ControlNet. I haven't been able to fully confirm whether wave speed supports nodes like Pool ID or ControlNet, though I hope they do. If you're planning to use Turbo LoRa, you'll want to increase the steps a little to see noticeable improvements in both speed and quality. For me, bumping the steps to 16 made a big difference. I saw double the quality at manageable speeds compared to lower settings. Between the two nodes, which one do I recommend? Personally, I stick with wave speed. The main reason is that TCache has a specific issue that makes it less reliable in my experience. Once the TCache node is triggered, it can create conflicts with other nodes or features in Comfy, sometimes requiring a restart to fix. The persistent caching can cause unexpected behavior, and clearing the cache or even disabling the node doesn't always resolve it completely. For example, I couldn't use the same threshold twice unless I cleared the cache, which defeats the whole purpose of improving speed. Wave speed doesn't have these issues and runs more smoothly overall. If TCache's compatibility improves in the future, it could become a great alternative, but for now, wave speed feels like the safer and more efficient choice. Something to keep in mind is that some users claim the apply first block cache node works even without Triton installed. I can't verify that because the first thing I did was install Triton. If you want even better performance, the compile model plus node is a great option, but it does require a newer graphics card and Triton. It's not strictly necessary, but it does help. If you're using anything below a 20 series graphics card, you should delete the compile model plus node as it won't work with older GPUs. You could also delete the TCache node for now and just use wave speed. This part is up to you. For my setup, I'll only use the apply first block cache node. So I'm going to delete both the compile model plus and TCache nodes entirely. That simplifies things and keeps my workflow efficient while avoiding compatibility issues. Now that we're done, let's get these nodes installed. Start by running Comfy UI and opening the manager. This is where we'll install the nodes, so there's no need to manually navigate to the custom nodes folder on your computer. Once the manager is open, click on install via git URL. There's a link in the description below that will take you to the WaveSpeed GitHub page. Go to that link, copy the URL from the page, and paste it into the window that pops up in Comfy UI. Click OK and wait for the installation process to complete. Next, go back to the manager and click on Custom Node Manager. In the search bar, type TCache and look for the one called Comfy UI TCache. Select it and install it. Once that's done, restart Comfy UI to make sure everything is properly loaded. That's the easy part finished. Now we're moving on to the part that tends to give people a bit of trouble. Triton. Both WaveSpeed and TCache, which we talked about earlier, depend on Triton under the hood to achieve their impressive performance improvements. 
Fortunately, a developer has forked the Triton project and created a special version for Windows. This version is available as a pre-built package and includes everything needed to run Triton on a Windows machine. While it does involve a few extra steps, it's absolutely worth it for the performance gains you'll get. The solution I'll walk you through is for the portable version of Comfy UI, as that's the one most people seem to have issues with. Before diving into this, there's something important to clarify. Comfy UI has its own Python environment, which operates independently of your system's Python version. This means that any references to Python PyTorch or CUDA in the installation instructions are specific to Comfy UI's environment, not your systems. For example, if a GitHub page tells you to check your CUDA version, it's asking for the CUDA version used by Comfy UI, not the one installed on your computer. The same applies to PyTorch and Python versions. This distinction is crucial to avoid any confusion during setup. To get Triton running, you'll need the correct wheel file. To figure out which one you need, start by checking the versions of PyTorch and Python being used by your Comfy UI setup. The easiest way to do this is to open Comfy UI. At the top of the CMD window, you'll see the Python version. My Python version is 3.11.6. Below that, you'll find the PyTorch and CUDA versions. In my case, it says PyTorch version 2.5.1 and CUDA version 12.1. With this information, go to the link in the video description, which takes you to the Triton for Windows wheel releases page. What you're looking for is the version that matches your Python setup. For example, if your Comfy UI uses Python 3.11, you'll want the wheel labeled CP311. If your Python version is 3.12, you'll look for CP312. There's one more thing to note here. You'll see two different Triton wheel versions, 3.0 and 3.1. The difference is compatibility. Version 3.1 is the latest, but it only works with PyTorch 2.4 and higher. If your PyTorch version is older than that, you'll need version 3.0. My setup is using PyTorch 2.5.1, which is compatible with both versions, but I decided to go with 3.0. From experience, Comfy UI tends to handle older versions a bit more reliably, and this helps avoid any potential issues with dependencies. Before installing Triton, there's one additional step you might need to take, especially if you're using version 3.0. You'll need to download two specific folders and place them in the Python embed folder that Comfy UI uses. On the Triton releases page, scroll down to post one, open the assets list by clicking the arrow and find the zip file that matches your Python version. Since I'm using Python 3.11, I downloaded the 3.11.9 zip file and extracted it. Inside the extracted files, you'll see two folders, one called libs and another called include. Before adding these to your Python and bid folder, make a backup of the existing include folder just in case something goes wrong. Once you've backed it up, copy and paste both the libs and include folders from the extracted files into the Python embid folder. With that done, you're ready to install Triton. Open File Explorer, navigate to the folder where Comfy UI's Python environment is located. This is the Python embed folder. Type CMD in the address bar to open the command prompt in that directory. Then type this command, python.exe-mpip install. Next, find the Triton wheel file, right-click on it, and select Copy Link. Paste that path into the command prompt after the pip install command. For example, if you're installing version 3.0 for Python 3.11, the command will look something like this. Python.exe-mpip install and the path to your Triton wheel file. Press Enter, and the installation will start. Once it's done, Triton is installed, and you won't need to worry about this process again. Restart Comfy UI, drag the workflow into the workspace, and you're good to go. One last thing to keep in mind. Older GPUs won't work with the Compile Model Plus node, but they should work fine with the Apply First Block Cache node. That's really all you need for most setups. The TCache node is another option that works with both newer and older GPUs, but it can be a bit glitchy. Experiment to see what works best for your hardware, and only use one since they serve the same purpose. When I tested this, my results were surprising. Using wave speed at 25 steps gave me speeds comparable to the Turbo LoRa at both 8 and 16 steps, but with noticeably better quality. For me, this changes everything. Faster speeds with better quality and without needing Turbo LoRa. Thank you for sticking with me through this video. 
like and subscribe for more deep dives just like this one, especially if you found it helpful or interesting. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next one.